Welcome to the Angelscapes podcast, where you're encouraged to uncover and develop a direct connection with your soul's power, wisdom, and spiritual intuition that is ready to blossom. We'll explore new ideas, compelling tips, and real steps to help you learn simple spiritual practices. We're a safe place to learn more about accessing your soul's power with education and spiritual wholeness that could bring more clarity to your life. Now here's your host, a practicing medium, Akashic Records practitioner, spirit artist, coach, and mentor, Dr. Reverend Nancy Smith. What inspires a person to become a medium, and what does it take to perfect the skill and art of mediumship? Hello, this is Angelscape's podcast, and I am your host, Nancy Smith. I want you to join me now um, for a talk with Dominic Bolg, a Scottish medium and extraordinary emissary for spirit side of life. And I want you to join us as Dominic tells us about his journey as a world-renowned medium and what inspires him and what keeps him going. What's his mission? This is a, this is a big job. Um, as one of UK's youngest, most successful mediums, Dominic is building an impressive reputation in the UK and here in America. And we're going to talk a little bit about what he's doing here in America, in the States and in Canada. Um, so we just got in here yesterday and um, find out what his gentle touch is. I heard that he has a very down to earth, loving medium and welcome to the show, Dominic. I'm so glad you came on. Nancy, it's an absolute pleasure and uh, sincerely thank you so much for inviting me uh, to spend this time with you. Great. Um, so we got to keep you awake while we're talking because you're just, <laughs> but, um, and I've, I've been hearing about you and, and, and kind of seeing you work here a little bit snippets here and there. And there's something very special about you, something very down to earth, but charismatic. So, um, I guess we'll pull that out of you as we talk, but what got you into mediumship? What, what started the whole ball rolling? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, believe it or not, I had no knowledge of, of life after death. I, I was brought up um, in a family with no religious background. And uh, thankfully, I, I didn't really have a reason to, to look at death. Um, but my father passed away very suddenly uh, when I was 14 years of age. And uh, the same evening that the cops had left to say that my father had been found passed away, I was in my, my bedroom and I was on the computer um, talking to my, my, my friends online, um, letting them know, you know, obviously I won't be at school and, and what had happened. And um, I could feel the whole atmosphere in the room just com completely change. And the hairs on my arm, my neck, everything just went very, very weird and tingly. And uh, as I turned to the side, I could see my father. He had uh, materialized, if, if you wanted to say, in the room and began um, talking to me, uh, telling me that it was his time to go and that we don't need to worry about him anymore and that he's sorry he didn't get to, to stick around and um, tell us uh, that he loved us. And um, that really began my awakening, if you want to say, um, with becoming aware of this ability, this gift, or or, or this um, knowing that uh, there was something going on. So uh, it was due to the loss of my father that I uh, am the medium that I am today. Oh my goodness. So that that's so touching. And being 14 is, is such a tender age. Now, the, the, there's always the next step, and then the next step, and then the next step. So I at the age of 14, you're uh, learning to live without your dad. So I'm sure the work didn't start right then. When... No, so as, as you could imagine, obviously we had to try to navigate through grief. Um, that was my first ever experience of, of loss. Uh, never mind a, a loss of someone so important uh, uh, and such a big stature in, in our life. Um, but I didn't really want to, you know, go pestering my mum, who was absolutely broken she was devastated uh, uh, it still haunts me um to see the the the, the memories of of my mom grieving um not wanting to eat not being able to 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 have a cup of tea not being able to speak uh that itself was was very haunting um, but as i was trying to navigate through my own emotions 
um, the stranger things just started to happen. You know, I became aware of more voices starting to, to appear out of thin air. I became very more sensitive to the people around me. And uh, I'd be in town with uh, my, my grandparents or my friend, and I, I would just start talking. You know, I would just say things like my best friend, Siobhan, she went through the whole process with me through the loss of my dad. And we were around town um, just shortly after. And uh, I remember saying to her, you know, we, we haven't seen, um, you know, this person in such a long time. So we would engage in that conversation. And I kid you not, we would turn the corner and that person we were talking about would come walking towards us. Like, is that a coincidence? And it just kept happening and happening. And then other times I would be talking to um, people and then other people would start to appear. So I'm looking at these people as I'm talking to the person, but no one else is acknowledging the other people. So I used to think, oh, what is going on? Are these people not talking? Have they had a bus stop? Has there been a fallout? And I would walk away and I'd say things to like my grandma, like, why did you not speak to that lady's husband? That, that was very rude for my grandmother to say, oh no, he, he, her husband passed away, you know, 10 years ago, son. My goodness. Oh, who was the man standing beside her for my grand to say, Dominic, there, there was no one there. So things like that really started to, you know, happen. And again, like I said, I didn't really want to go telling my mum, hey, mum, you know, I'm seeing people, I can hear voices, and FYI, dad's okay. Um, but after she, you know, really got back on her feet and started to move through grief, because as you know yourself, as a medium, grief isn't something that we can rush. There is no manual to how to grieve. We we just have to, in a sense, go through the, the ocean of grief and, and just allow love to guide us. But a few months after that, she herself went to our local spiritualist church and the medium had brought through my father, uh, right down to the address that my father was found passed away at. And uh, yeah through my dad he basically outed me to my mum and he told the the medium to tell my mum that I hear the voices of spirit and that the medium was to help support me and guide me and one day I will travel the world talking to dead people if you want to say so my mum looked at the medium with the most craziest of look probably in shock and my mum as cheeky as ever says well I have two sons and the lady, the medium replied, yes, but you only have one that's 14 years of age. And my mum came back home and I had came back from being out with my friends and um, she was sat at the dining table with a few of our, our neighbours who really helped my mum through the, the loss of my dad. And she says with the most beautifulest of Scottish accent, here, son, is there anything you want to tell me? And I looked at her with the most shocked face. And I'm like, no. <laughs> She's like, I was at the spooky church. I'm like, oh my God, what is she going to say next? And uh, she then asked me. And that's when I was able to tell her everything that I had been experiencing. Goodness. And, and how did she take it? When you ver validated it, you verified it. Yeah, I'm hearing people. Yeah, she probably, you know, picked up a cigarette and rolled her eyes, you know. <laughs> Um, and probably thought I, I was crazy. Um, but the, the interesting thing was that following week, I went to the same spiritualist church. I went on my own, 14 years of age. I was like, what is this crazy stuff all about? You know? And uh, I, I actually went to be proven wrong. I went to be proven wrong. Like, yeah, Dominic, you actually are crazy. Mm -hmm. And I sat at the back of the room and I kid you not, there may be maybe 50 people all of a mature age, I'd probably say 50, 60s plus, and there's me. Maybe I stood out like a sore thumb. Um, but that same medium who ran that church, Sandra, she then came to me and she says, I've been speaking to your dad. I'm like, uh oh. She says, I've been waiting for you. She says, your dad's telling me that I have to train you and I have to help you. And, you know, I want you to come to, to, to our class. I'm like, a class? What is a class? Uh, but I did, Nancy. I, I I thought, okay, let's let's just go and see what this is all about. And uh, that was on the Monday, and the class was on the Tuesday evening. 
And uh, from 14, I, I sat in development circle three evenings a week uh, to harness and understand my new way of life. Well, wow, three evenings a week. Wow, that's that's crazy. That's amazing. That, that much studying. Usually it's once a week, maybe. I know. I was spoiled. I, I really was. And I always say that I was spoiled in my uh, my unfoldment of, of mediumship. So I done that for uh, two years. And then when I was 16, I then started to take platform across Scotland and um, people through the, the, the Spiritualist Church was asking me um, to start doing private readings for them. Wonderful. Wonderful. Spirit really wanted you out there. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> So um, now, now skip a few years later, maybe two, um, did you, um, and you find yourself actually traveling outside of the Scotland borders and people are really getting excited about your work. Tell me about that. Yeah, so um, as things started to unfold, word started to, you know, reach um, other parts of the, the UK of um who I was and what I was doing and the demand for uh, private readings, the demand for um, coming to demonstrate in the spiritualist churches, um, but also then with my own live events just grew and grew and uh, it was very daunting. Uh, I won't try to, to pretend it wasn't. It was very daunting. I was still navigating who I was myself and um, I, I guess I could just, I just owned it as maybe the best way. I just, you know, took it in my stride and I just went with it. But I was never under the impression or the illusion that this was going to be my full-time job or what I wanted to do as my career. Um, you ask anyone, I had huge ambitions to become a, a, a police officer. Um, so I certainly didn't want, you know, to take on the role of being a medium. I thought eventually I could maybe, you know, put that to the side and, you know, maybe look once or twice but that was never what I planned to do with with the rest of my life what um, happened to the, to the police the, uh, the police officer job what what you just never came around you just never got a chance to put your feet into it yeah no so I was um about to embark on back home in the UK we have a thing called um the police cadets maybe similar to to what we have here in the states like the academy um but you I had to be able to drive before I, I could apply and um, I needed to earn some cash. I, I started working in a call center um, for a, a company back home. And I started to realize that my vision wasn't 100%, something was changing. And I thought I just needed glasses. So I went to um, the opticians and I thought, yeah, go to the opticians, get the certificate that says I have clear vision. Then I can start taking driving lessons. Um, but I was in the opticians for three hours with both my mum and um, after the three hours and seeing five opticians, I then received an emergency referral to our local hospital. And in the hospital, they'd done several tests and I seen several ophthalmologists and I was back and forth maybe for at least four or five weeks. Uh, one of the diagnoses was that I had a brain tumour the back of my um, eyes leaning on my optic nerve, which was starting to dis, uh, change my vision. And slowly I started to, to lose vision in my, my right eye that then led into my left eye. So it took almost two months to be diagnosed uh, with a very rare condition called Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy which now I am legally blind. I don't have central vision. I only have peripheral vision. So that is then why I was no longer able to become a police officer um, because I'm now registered visually impaired. So did spirit or universe or just synchronicities took that right off your plate? Well, here it is, Nancy. I spent some time, as you do as a medium, building that relationship with the spirit. And I truly believe I was blinded by spirit to do the greater work. Now, I know that won't sit right with a lot of mediums out there, but I, I just, I personally like to believe in my soul, if I went on a different course, I was then leaving spirit behind and maybe I wouldn't have been able to touch or heal the amount of people that I have. Um, took me a long time to realize that maybe this is my journey. This is maybe yeah. that word destiny. And you know what? I wouldn't change it for the love nor money. I am very content with the journey, the path that I am I am on, thanks to our buddies in the unseen world. I have a, a couple of follow-up questions I want to ask you. Um, so we talked a little bit before before 
before the show about um spiritualism is big in the states it's big in england and are you part of the spiritualist movement you're saying no not really you had a different kind of philosophy uh you, you and your your mediumship work is a very spiritual into itself and i would love for you to talk more about that live if you don't mind yeah no absolutely so like i said i i, I you know i started in a spiritualist church i actually started in an independent spiritualist church um so i had the freedom of expressing with the spirit um I still to this day work in, you know, all the, the, the major spiritualist churches back home, um, whether it's SNU or whether it's independent, but I've just never truly been a religious person. I've, mm -hmm. I've always had a knowing um, of being a human being and, and to have empathy that should come natural to, to us through the soul. So in a sense, I'm not under an umbrella of being a spiritualist. What I am is trying to be the best version that I can as a spiritual person. Um, for me, living as a medium um, and living as a spiritual person, it's a way of life for me. Uh, as much as spiritualists and spiritualism is a religion, and boy, did they work hard to, to get that recognition, and I'll be entirely grateful for that. But for me, it should be a way of life. It should happen naturally. And um, I feel I'm just on my journey. I, I'm just I'm just Dominic. You know, I'm Dominic with the spirit. And um, I go anywhere, uh, I answer the call, and if I can make it happen, then I do. So although I don't belong to an organization, I serve the organizations. Does that make sense? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I totally understand that. And I uh, think that that is uh, what people, you know, that what, what the spirit, the, what we all need, you know, for people to show up like like you and Raylene and me and all the, all the mediums that get in front of people and say, I'm going to put myself on the limb and do my mediumship work. And it's, it's a big commitment, you know, well, isn't, isn't that all that the spirit world asks? You know, I say to my students all the time, even, you know, whether I'm teaching beginners or I'm actually teaching professional mediums, there's always that doubt, you know, what, what if I can't do it? What if, what if I can't? And I always say to, to the students, all the spirit asks is that you show up let them do the rest and that's all we have to do is, is just show up um, and stand and uh, as I always say give the spirit a voice once again so you're absolutely right lovely lovely so that goes into the next um, way of your your yeah, your mission statement as they say or or your your um the reason for continuing on is is serving spirit but and it sounds like it's bringing you a lot of joy um so talk to me a little bit about that what what keeps your motor going and what keeps my more wow um <laughs> you know I, I i done a, a podcast recently as well and it was like you know one of the questions was what is the best part of your work and I, I really struggled to to answer that um but what keeps me going um when you have a broken mother who comes into your room and she doesn't have a smile on her face she has no life in herself her aura is depleted there's there's no life there. And when you're able to touch her life through connecting her to her, her daughter and bringing through the evidence and bringing through the memories and replacing that horror of a death with beautiful memories of the life they shared together and having a conversation with that mother and her daughter and seeing her get up off that chair and leave with a smile on her face and a skip in her step. And yeah. that just leaves me with the knowing that she will move forward another day, now finally knowing that her daughter is by her side. That's what keeps me going, Nancy. There's a lot of people will say to me, especially after sessions, you will never know what this means to me. And yeah, I've I've never, you know, lost a child. I've never lost a mom or or a or a, a partner or or whatever, but I have been touched by death. And I know that pain, I know that loss, and I know what it means and what it feels like to receive that confirmation from a medium. So in reality, I do, I understand that. And that's why I do what I do, to help someone wake up one more day with that knowing that their loved one is still there. So that's what that's what keeps me going. That's That's what it is, is being able to touch someone's life and just give them that little bit of, of hope and that little bit of knowing that you know what they are just in the other room and for this time being I just need to stay in this room until I'm ready to, to move into that room. 
Yeah. So that's what keeps me going, plain and simple. Nice. That's beautiful. You teach now. When did you start teaching? Um, I was I was thrown into the deep end for teaching, believe it or not. Um, my um sounds like your whole life you've been thrown into the deep end. <laughs> So that, that's going to be on my, my gravestone, isn't it? Still working and thrown in the deep end. Uh, but yeah, so um, the, the medium, Sandra, who uh, was, was my mentor, she was already working in the States. And um, she, I had very quickly became the vice president of our church. And then she was going out to the States to work. So there was no one left to take the circle. And all the st other students, much older than myself, maybe even you know a little bit more experience they'll turn to me like well you need to teach us you 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 know what you're doing you need to help us so I then started to to teach the circle I probably started teaching that when I was 17 and um, it really started to help me look at mediumship and my relationship with spirit from yes working evidentially and giving readings but hold on as a teacher, I now need to earn skills. I need to earn understanding that I can then share. So um, early on, I started teaching. And I kid you not, it's one of my greatest passions. One of my greatest passions being able to help mediums look at mediumship a little bit differently, look at maybe what their blocks are. And I, I'm a nourisher, Nancy. I, I, just, I just say to my students, you know, come let uncle take you by the hand and, you know, let's move together and see what, what the problem is. Um, so, yeah, I was left teaching the students back home for uh, at least two months. And um, as time went on, I then was given my own circle to, to continue teaching. And uh, it just grew from there. Wonderful. That's just wonderful. Um, I, I am getting the idea that a lot of people really respect and and hold the door open for you, you know, and, and are excited to see you. Now, you we talked a little you're here in the States now. And before we started, you listed I don't know how many places that you're going to travel in the States while you're here. Now you're here, you just got here Monday and you're here through September. Is that? Yeah. So I, I arrived uh, yesterday. I almost lose track of time. I arrived yesterday and uh, I am here till the middle of, of September, um, you know, flying in and out to, to all these beautiful different places. Yeah. So you have um, Massachusetts and then New York and then, then in somewhere in Canada um, yeah, so I'm, I'm heading to New York. I, I've got um, some private readings lined up for, for New York. I'm heading out to, to Canada. One of my um, students that I was mentoring um, over the pandemic, she actually has opened her own um, spirit school, um, Danielle Seacrest. So she has opened her own spirit school and she's asked me to, to be out there um, as her first international teacher. Um, so it's my first time in Canada, which I'm very excited about. So I'll be teaching uh, at her spirit school and then I'm heading to Colorado and uh, I will be doing uh, events in Colorado in Boulder. And then I'm flying to Miami um, to do, again, private readings. And then I come back to, to Massachusetts um, to do more uh, demonstrations and uh, workshops and uh, readings. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a busy season. Busy season. Uh, I wanted, I posted uh, again for the second time, dominicbogue.com um, um, slash America, if people wanted to catch up um, with you somewhere in the States, if they, if they can. Um, and uh, so the Boston and you have a wor um, workshops, plus um, you'll be demonstrating, you're doing readings at onset and you're demonstrating in um and in the cape uh down in the cape down in onset i'll be demonstrating and doing a workshop and uh, i'll be also in maine um with uh, my beautiful friend and colleague raylene souza as well so we'll be doing portland um so i've got lots of things lots of things but as you see going on to my website dominicbogue.com and they will be able to to see what i'm doing I'm glad you're not asking me for specific dates because girl i would mess that all up let me tell you <laughs> Me too. We just let the, the, that's what the website's for. <laughs> oh, yep. I would make it up. My my assistant, Kimberly, back home, she always tells me, don't mention dates because you will tell them the wrong dates. And what do I do? I mention dates. And she's left picking up all the emails and trying to fix it all. Oh, gee. Well, I'm glad you have an assistant. Now, um, I know that you know the this seems like a basic question, but for those who are listening, and there'll be people who don't know much about mediumship, can we talk a little bit about the um 
they have the demonstrating part of it. Then you have the one-on-one -on -one readings and then you have the teaching. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between a one-on-one -on -one reading and or going to a demonstration to see you. Well, for me, there's many ways that you could look at this. Um, and I try to bring a modern twist to this. So in a demonstration of mediumship, you know, if, if you could be sitting between anywhere from 50 people to 250 people, 300 people. And let's face it, these people have come with the hope of hearing from someone special. Mm -hmm. We all have sat there. As a medium, we are not going to be able to touch every individual personally but through the beautiful connections that come through and through the conversations hopefully everyone will then be touched by the presence of spirit so how I like to describe the difference between demonstrating mediumship and a private reading is and don't laugh at this but in a demonstration, uh, demonstration of mediumship we have a very limited time so I like to say if you receive a message in a demonstration, it's almost like a text message. And that text message, we keep it short, we keep it sweet, but we keep it, you know, to the point so that we know what we're trying to get across to the recipient. Mm -hmm. In a private reading, it's almost like an email. You've got the luxury of, you know, pages and pages and pages. And in the private reading, you've got the luxury of time. You know, with me, I, I only conduct one hour private readings so that I have the luxury of having that time and, and going through that conversation with the spirit to deliver it. And that's why I use that analogy of demonstrating you're getting a text message from your loved ones. But in a, a private reading, you're getting an email that's full of the gossip, it's full of the juicy stuff, the memories, okay. the guidance, the things going on in life. So there's a, a different balance. But demonstrating is, is beautiful because you may have people sitting in the, the audience who have maybe even been dragged along reluctant, you know, like, nah, I don't really buy into this. I don't know about this. And maybe their loved one actually does come forward and has a contact for them. And that leaves them with the curiosity and that then plants that seed, you know, and it allows everyone present to be a part of each person's message, to be a part of that conversation that can unfold in that moment. And that's what it is, Nancy. You know yourself, you demonstrate. It's a beautiful moment. That's all we have, you see. So demonstrating is, is fun. It's vibrant. For me, especially at my demonstrations, it can be a roller coaster. Sometimes we'll be up high with, you know, some beautiful memories and laughter. Sometimes, you know, I'm even on stage having a cry to myself. And that's the human in me, you know. But yeah, that's that's what I would, that's the easiest way I could describe them. Yeah, no, it's... Um... Uh, just talking a little bit, I do um, I do spirit art, so I've I've managed to develop it. So if we have a, a demonstration reading is be three to seven minutes, yeah. and and I can I've managed to figure out how to do a drawing in in three to seven minutes that people can recognize, wow. and uh and and it's really interesting because I want them to come back if they really want to know more. And, and just sit with me, like you said, the luxury of sitting with a, a, a full-time thing, but it's, it's, it's snippets. It's, in, it's, hello, I'm here. And then, and then, um, and I'm always here and, and you can talk to me anytime, but I got, you know, but the uh, sitting down with the one-on-one, -on -one, you can, yeah, you really can work, you can work on the grief. You can yeah. work on, on the impact that that person had on you and, and you can prove that they're fine. And, um, that kind of thing. And I, I know that you must work a lot and you've mentioned it throughout this whole interview so far, the grief aspect um, with your with your clients that come to get readings. Um, do you have grief training or do you feel spirit just kind of helps you, walks you through it? I, 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 I certainly don't have grief training. You know, uh, everything that I have really learned uh, for the years has, has been organic uh, and unfolded naturally, I, I say. But again, I'll always take it back to uh to in order to be a, a true medium you have to have death touch your life unfortunately you have to know that meaning of loss and you have to have experienced that law lo loss and have been able to have moved through that loss um but for me mediumship is is counseling in a, a big perspective um we are dealing with people at their most vulnerable points of life and 
that should come down to common sense, to be honest with you. That should come down to personal responsibility um, with knowing how you conduct yourself and knowing how you're how you're working with that person that's sat in front of you and that for me is where the empathy comes in that's built in our dna that's where the sensitivity comes in um uh, with that as well so i don't have um a degree or a diploma or or, or any fancy um training um i i i have experience i have loss and um i have a heart i have a heart and uh, I have a listening ear for your loved ones in the spirit world. And let's face it, I just sit in a chair and talk. Your loved ones do the the, the work. They know what they're doing. So I, I just I just put all my my trust, my faith and my little old heart to, to the spirit world, to your loved ones. And I trust that they know what you need in that moment. So that's true. I really I love that answer because that's kind of how it spirit teaches me. It leads me and guides me for the person in front of me. And um and that and that kind of thing do you have any um advice to somebody who's preparing say they've lost somebody very close to them and they're deep in grief and they're preparing to see a medium what kind of advice would you give them what kind of advice well i'll start off with a beautiful quote that my uh, colleague and friend uh, scott milligan uses and it's he who enters expecting nothing will not leave disappointed now, if we look at that, if, if we go with an expectation, then we are already putting boundaries out to the spirit world. Even if we don't know that we're doing that, we are. I always say to people, if you're coming for a, a, a reading, if you're coming to communicate with your loved one, take just a few moments to yourself and send that invitation out to those, not just that one person, but to those that you have lost. And, you know, let them know what your hope and your desire is to achieve through the, the experience with a medium. You know, some people will, will, will say to people to, to bring a piece of clothing or a picture or, or an item. And that's that's perfectly well. And that's absolutely fine as well. But I'm a true believer, Nancy, and I, I personally think you will you will agree with this. I believe that our clients that sit before us, I believe their loved ones in the spirit world made that magical moment happen. Yeah. All I say is come with an open heart. Let's just go on an adventure together and let's just see where we end up. And if it works, beautiful. If it doesn't, hey, you get your money back and, you know, we'll maybe have a cup of tea and a, a chit chat anyway. You know, it's, it's not a big deal, but come with an open heart and a, 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 an open heart and a good a good mind. And let's just see what, what magic can be, be happening. Because mediumship for me is a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. Oh. That every, we're able to do every time it come it's a miracle i came through and they understood it and they're touched and you see a recognition and you see it on their faces and it's it's, it's beautiful um what would you um say to a, a a medium who's just starting to work out somebody who thinks they may have something and they i gotta figure out what's going on with me and i i don't know if i want to do this but but now i'm gonna try to do it and the do it's it's a it's an up and down I think process sometimes what you say to those students I would say get yourself into a regular class um so that you can work it you know let's face it mediumship is a muscle it needs to be exercised it's something that we can't just do for you know two or three days and expect to see the beautiful you know body of a greek god thank goodness you can't see below so you know we 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 have to exercise it so i would say to to the students get into somewhere that you feel comfortable find a teacher that fits your um ethnics and you know someone that, that feels right for you and just practice just practice, throw caution to the wind and get yourself into that mode of receiving strangers saying to you, absolutely, yeah, my father who is now departed was a fireman. How do you know that? Get yourself into a place where you can get frequent um, validations so that you know there's something there. And uh, once you get to that place of, okay, I kind of feel I've got a little bit of a an understanding and a foundation because that's one thing that that we all need especially in the beginning we need a solid foundation then go explore there's lots of wonderful wonderful classes teachers courses go explore go explore but just trust the spirit will teach you that's the greatest advice I can give you trust the spirit will teach you 
right? Because they, they're, the, they're the real teachers, as, as spirit is to me, you know, and, and the teachers, the people be teachers are just kind of opening the door, yeah. coming through and, yep, and a helping hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned a couple of times uh, that somebody will come get a reading for you and maybe the connection doesn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit more. So I think that people would like to know that who are getting ready to be clients, but people who are mediums also need to hear about that as well. well. You know, it's, it's very it's very important, you know, for mediums to number one, always remember you're not a performing monkey. You know, this isn't something that can constantly be on demand. Number one, the circumstances have to be correct. I'm a true believer in divine timing. Is the spirit ready to communicate? Is the client ready to receive the communication? So there's lots of factors, lots of factors that are put into place to allow that beautiful moment to, to happen. Now, on the very rare occasion that I have not been able to conduct and I've had no communication from any spirit, all I can say is, I'm so sorry, it's it's not working. Maybe I'm not the right medium for you. Maybe you're, you know, I'm not going to go making excuses, you know. But again, you can just give the person their money back. You could guide them to a spiritualist church or a recommendation to someone else. There will be a reason behind it. Um, but sometimes, and I've had this through experience, sometimes no matter what you say to the client, they can be so caught up in grief that, it just doesn't come together or they don't understand it or they're not listening and maybe they don't quite know how to receive um, from a medium so you know don't get yourself so worked up if it works and beautiful things happen fabulous well done if it doesn't did you try and did you show up that's all the spirit asks so you know I always say to, to students and I always remind myself all the time you are a human before you were a medium. And always remember that being a medium doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. Being a human being doesn't mean you're perfect. We can be perfectly incomplete, but we cannot be perfect all the time. And it's important to not put yourself under that pressure of I must perform. You know, a lot of times, uh, sadly, mediums are stuck on this feeling of evidence, 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 evidence. For me, that's boring. You know, someone's life shouldn't be summed up with just fact after fact after fact. There's got to be a beautiful place where a conversation unfolds. And uh, the easiest way to, to remind yourself of that is I'm going through a beautiful moment to heal this person. I'm not on a treasure hunt. So if you allow yourself as a medium to remove your own expectations, then beautiful things can happen. This is what you're saying is... Um a little unique and, and a little rare for some of the teachers that I've heard. So I, I really am excited to hear this. I, I feel comforted and I hope a lot of mediums really can hear you're a human being first. You're not a machine. And um, I and I know that um, I've heard British mediums say this, that American clients are very different than British clients and that American clients can be a little bit more demanding, a little more interruptive. Um, have you found this? How do you, managing clients? Um, um. I personally have not experienced that. Uh, okay. And I've been working in the States since I was 19. Um, you can do the maths. Uh, but no, I've, I've not really um, seen that, to, to be honest. Um, I've, I don't want to sound like I'm perfect. I really don't want to come across that way. But I've never really had a struggle. Maybe that's the easiest way to say it. But yeah. again, Nancy, I'm very blunt. I'm very blunt. Um, and again, through my mediumship, if if a client, whether it's in Poland or whether it's Australia, Japan or here in the States, if the the client asks me a simple question of, well, I have two grandmothers, I basically just take it around and say, yeah, but you only had one grandmother that had breast cancer that lost her left breast and that's your mum's mum. You know, I take them straight back. I don't allow the client to go looking. But then that comes down to if you're giving generic information. If you're giving generic information, then your client has going to start looking at, well, I have a father, but I also have an uncle who was a father figure, but also my grandfather. No, sweetie, this is your father. This is your bio. This is your father. Passed with a heart attack, found in the store. That's your father. Yeah, that's true. Whereas if you're leaving it open with there's a gentleman here, father, father figure, may have had heart issues, then, you know, the client's going to start looking. So 
I, I've really not had that that problem, and that surprises me that you, you've said that, that some British uh, mediums um, have have came across that. I personally have not. Okay, perfect. I, just... I think these are a dream, if I'm truly honest with you. And I always say, and I've, <laughs> I've written this in my book as well, when I started traveling in, uh, to the States, that's when I feel my mediumship soared, you oh. know? Okay. Um, so I, I personally think these are, these are a dream to work with. Oh, nice. I like hearing that. I, I don't like hearing that I have a pro problem. <laughs> Terrific. Um, what do you see yourself do um, doing with your mediumship or what would you like to do with your mediumship or the work around whatever you want to talk about uh, in the next over the next few years? Where are you going to heading out to? Uh, I will still be um, number one of my priority will be still conducting private readings. A lot of people um, always are surprised. Um, I don't know why this surprises people um, that someone with my stature no longer needs to do private readings. And, uh, you know, when I tell them, no, I uh, private readings are, are are my thing. That's that's what, what why I do what I do. Um, so I will always still be doing private readings, probably, you know, God spare me in my 80s on my rocking chair, still trying to, to do it. Uh, but teaching is, is one of my biggest passions, as I've said. So um, I do plan to be building more um, residential seminars um, uh, across the world um, to, to bring people to come for um, a few days or, or, or a week and just nourish them. So I want to, to build that more. Um, so that can really help students and, like I said, professional mediums take their mediumship to the next level. And um, who knows, maybe I'll still be, you know, in a theatre somewhere near you um, and, and just <laughs> you know what, if spirit, if spirit still see that the old boy has uh, has a voice to to give them, then I will just, I'll show up, Nancy. That's what I'll do. I'll just keep trying to be the best that I possibly can. And uh, I'm loving it. You know, I'm really loving it. And um, hopefully they are loving what I do, Touchwood. And um, I'll just keep trying to be myself and keep trying to heal the best that I possibly can. One of my my cheeky little models that I, I always use, uh, I use this in my events, on my my website or whatever, is, you know, I I, I like to to think that I heal hearts and reunite families. Um, so if, if spirit are willing, I'm still willing to be on this journey. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Did you notice in, in the States how many mediums there are? Is that, is, do, we have, do you have that many mediums in uh, over in... Um... Um, everyone's a medium now. Every, everyone is a, is a medium now. And I don't mean that sarcastically, but boy, it's, you know, there's there's been this this unfoldment or, or this flourish. And um, it's, it's not such a bad thing. Yeah, it's a, such a bad thing because there's so many people out there that are maybe not doing the good work and that's okay and that's their journey but there's some beauty out there as well um but yeah we we're certainly um multiplied in, in so many ways which is is quite cool um do i notice more in the states um yeah you know no, not I, I. I would say it's kind of balanced. Obviously, that you, you know, your your nation is so much bigger in, in population than than here in the the UK. Um, but again, when when you're an international teacher, you see the 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 dynamics across the the world anyway. So, um, you know, we're 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 always somewhere, aren't we, uh, as mediums? And um, let's just hope that the 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 good work continues to unfold and that. The healing is done and that people's view of of mediums uh changes and becomes a little bit more lighter and positive and more surreal well yeah i was i was kind of talking about and i'd love for you to talk, comment on this and go further with it is that um people are lots of people are interested in is there life after death or what's going on or what's happening and um over the decade past 10 20 years churches have diminished and, and people aren't going to the, the organized churches but they still have questions on spirituality and i i sometimes think that's where the mediumship has is growing everyone can be a medium um on whatever level they want to take it to and, and i often say to people i think studying it or understanding how you work and how you talk to spirit is probably the most important thing that you do for yourself yeah. personally it doesn't mean that you have to get out there and have a, a job doing it, but talk to me about a little bit. What do you see? So do people come to you just to develop their spirituality sometimes or? I, 
some most of the time um a lot of, of people will, will come to me to you know if they became a little bit rusty or 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 they know they can do so much better with with mediumship so uh, you know i will you know strip them back and, and critique them and show them different techniques and you know help change their understanding of what mediumship is all about um but when it comes to developing your your your, your spiritual self you know, in order to be that clear vessel, in order to, to be able to help other people's life, it's a no brainer. We we need to know ourselves. We we need to be able to have healed ourselves. Um, and I, I personally don't think that's something that many mediums in development are doing. I, I think sadly, and this is just a personal opinion, and it doesn't mean that anyone's doing wrong, but I think we are seeing a lot more mediums coming out that are rushing their mediumship then you know they're they're going on maybe a a, a three month mentorship course and now they're they're then a medium but you know the, the 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 damage that can be done is is you know it's really really hard to repair so for me mediumship isn't something that should be rushed it's something that needs to be developed it's a journey um so i think we all all whether we are working mediums developing mediums or teachers we all have to be cautious of that and we have to be cautious of self we have to be cautious of self and we have to be cautious of our own egos we have to be cautious of our own views of life of people um so you know get to know yourself mm -hmm. then get to know your spirit and then let the work begin is the easiest way that i describe that yeah yeah I like i like what you're saying it, it, that makes sense you, and the unfoldment it, it takes years to, you know it, where what you do over the course of the years is of course up to you and where you are but to really um let yourself take the years that it it takes it's um when i think of when i observe people who are for the first time figuring out that there's life after death and you can prove it and you can talk to their loved ones it blows their world wide open <laughs> can be sensitive towards that but also um i've noticed that many mediums who, like you've lost your father it, have had trauma in their in their lives that have led them to the mediumship work and um and there's that depth and there's that growth and opening that needs to happen um i feel like it, partly as a human being but partly as a, a person who's going to be one foot on one side and one foot on the other talking to the spirit world you there's a lot that goes through yourself that your consciousness yeah. it, do you ever think of it's you know it's, it's exhausting and this is what a lot of of people don't understand you know a lot of people that maybe come to demonstrations or or come for readings without sounding you know abrupt they don't really think of the the after moments of what the medium has to go through you see mm -hmm. uh, mediumship uh, as mediums we don't go through just your grandmother passed in the hospice with cancer and it was a beautiful moment i've dealt with things from murder from um terrorist attacks from suicides to natural causes and the human part of me is always left at the end when i've said thank you to that husband who's came forward when i've you know consoled my 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 client and they've left happy I'm then left. I'm left processing what I've had to experience, what I've witnessed. And that sometimes can it can really have, and a, a lot of mediums will not um, admit to this, but it can have a huge impact on your mental health. Let's face it, it can be very depressing. You know, I've seen times, you know, I'd finish a, a day of private readings and then I would get in the car to come home and either my partner, Mark, or my assistant, Kimberly, they will then start trying to have a conversation with me. And I just have to give them the look of, nah, leave me be. Mm -hmm. I need to go and process. I need to go and digest. And that's something that yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of people who seek mediums, they may take that for granted. They do. They pull. They can pull really, really hard because their lives are so in, they're painful and they want to know and they want to understand and um i uh again going back to the client who's just starting to figure out how big life is and that's a process as well it, it's it's not going to happen in one hour that you're going to have it all together and and it, it's a very delicate tender thing i feel and that that you're privy to i'm privy to any medium that's working that we we open a door and um Sometimes that door's really heavy. 
right. we we can only open that door we don't know how much we will get through that door right. we don't know how much we will experience you know I, I remember going back a, a few years um I had a, a, a lady um she had came for for a private reading and again I I just the moment I see that client in my office is the first moment of contact that I, I've had with them. And uh, through the reading, you know, I, I had her mom, I, I had her brother and, you know, it was, it was fine. It was fine. It was yes. And there was beautiful information and that, that was okay. But then I became aware of a young boy in the spirit world. And I started to give some pieces, some pieces from this young boy and it became very weak very diluted compared to the mom and compared to her brother. But I gave what I got. And at the end of the, the reading, she says, you know, I, I, I really only came to, to hear from, from my son. I, I, I was hoping. And in that reading, in that reading, in that one hour reading, she maybe got 15 minutes of her son. And like I said, diluted, not 100% powerful. And that haunted me. And I says to the spirit, why did he not come in first? Why was I not able to have the same power from her mom and her brother than I did for, for her son? And what my father told me back was, son, if you started off with her son and gave her everything all at once, it would have been too much. She would not have been able to take it in because she would be so wrenched with grief, emotion, that she would not have been able to experience the beauty. But what you gave her was some light. And who knows, maybe that door has now been opened. The next time she crosses paths with a medium, that medium will then be able to give her 70% power. And then the next time that medium will give her the 100%. So I had to realize there's a bigger picture here in the communication. There's a bigger picture on what can and what, what we can give. And uh, that's so true. You know, if, if you're coming for a private reading and you're just holding on to that one person, then if you hold on to someone so close and you hold them so tight, how can you expect them to get to the medium to communicate? You see? So there's a bigger picture. And um, it took me a while to realize and to process that what was given in that moment was what was needed and what was meant to be. You know, the intelligence and the compassion of spirit is just huge. And, and I'm, I'm sure that you have hundreds and thousands of stories uh, that have proven to you. Um, and this is a big deal how it, it, constantly I'm being proven the continuity of life and the depth of it and the loving and the care of it. I, you, you, could you speak on that for yourself? I'm sure you. Well, you know. Like I said, I, I've I've now been doing this this half of my life. I'll I'll be thirty two this year in in December. And <laughs> okay, sorry, thirty two. <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of people, even skeptics or people for the first time of of meeting me, they'll always say, "Oh, so you believe in life after death?" And I I look at them with this glare on my face and the smile, and I say, "No, I I I don't." Because in all honesty, Nancy, I don't believe in life after death. I know there's life after death and when you know something you cannot unknow it but if you believe in something that belief can easily be changed okay. and that's what I I you know I, I truly truly experience every time I sit with a client and beautiful things happen that communication that intelligence from one stranger to another and then a, a, a spirit that proves to me that there's life after death like you said, I've got numerous, numerous stories, numerous experiences. I'm sure we all have, whether you're a medium or whether you are a, a, a client on that journey of exploring life after death. Um, I know it. Does it make my grief process different? No, it doesn't, because I still grieve. I still lost. Uh, it's, 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 it's coming up to um, the first year anniversary of, of losing my, my beautiful dog, Jackson. And I kid you not, it was gut-wrenching, gut-wrenching. I, I couldn't breathe um, for days losing, losing that beautiful boy. But I know, I know he's with my dad. I know he's with my other dog. But the human part of Dominic still wants him here. And it's, it's, 
you know, it's the same as a, the wife who grieves her husband. The human part of her still wants him there to hold or to kiss or to smell or to moan at for not turning on the dishwasher. That's the human part of us. And we're all entitled to have that. But remember, life's an experience. There's no manual of how to live life. There's no coach that can guide you through how to live your life. We can just be present and just be grateful and gracious for each day and each beat in our heart that we are given. And hopefully that next day will give us another opportunity to learn and to understand and to have compassion. But just move through life with that knowing that life is eternal. For me personally, I feel it's a blessing and I feel, I don't want to say pitiful because that's a horrible word. I, I feel sad and for those who have not yet experienced through their grief that life is eternal. It, yes, absolutely. I had a client who said this to me and um, she uh, had lost somebody very important to her. I don't want to give way too many details, but it was devastating over a number of years. And um, she did not want to know. She Okay, so she wanted to know about he was there, he was okay. She, you know, she could connect with him, but she didn't want to know that life could be better over there than here because she was so filled with grief here and she needed to stay here. Yeah. Um, and I've heard that multiple times from clients that, that life is, um, can be complicated once you realize that, that there is a wonderful life after you pass. Have you had to think about that or talk to anyone about that? Well, absolutely. You know, I, I had a lady who, she was so caught in her grief and so caught up in her grief um, that she had taken her son and daughter um, out for a beautiful meal and she took them shopping. She bought them lavish gifts and, and everything else. And um, I was sitting in a, a, a restaurant and spirit started to interact with me. And because I wasn't working, you know, I kept saying, no, no, you know, no, no. But my own father had stepped forward and said, son, this is this is important. And um, the husband had came through to me and gave me information. And he says to me, you need to you need to speak to my wife. And I says, well, if I'm going to approach a stranger, I says, I need specific information. So he gave me these beautiful information. I says, well, where is your wife? Because there's only two people in this restaurant and they're men. And he says, she's got the umbrella looking around. This was the summer. There was no rain. There was no need for an umbrella. And all of a sudden the door blew open and this lady came barging in fighting with an umbrella and she sat down beside me with her son and her daughter. So at the end, I goes up to the beautiful lady and I says, um, I hope you don't mind me interrupting. I says, I, I'm a medium um, and you know, I, I've got a message for you if you're open to, to that. And she looked up at me with a tear in her eye and she says, yeah, sure. I gave her this information about her husband and I delivered the message and the message was plain and simple. You may think my world is better than yours, my sweetheart, but think of our children's world without you. So I says to her that information and she pulled me aside from her son and her daughter. And she says, you have no idea how much you have changed my life. And I says, listen, it's okay. You don't need to thank me. And she says, that's my son and daughter. She says, and um, I've taken the, I always get goosebumps telling the story. I took them out today and I've spent all my money, all my savings from my bank account to treat them, to give them a, a, a beautiful day. She says, I miss my husband so much and I know he's in such a better place that I plan to go home tonight to be with him. She says, but you have now stopped me doing that. And that lady still to this day, whenever I'm doing a certain place in Glasgow, comes up to me and she says, I'm still here. And she, she goes away and thanks me. So she actually planned to give her son and daughter a beautiful meal, spend all her money, and then was planning to go home and take her life so she could be with him. Yeah, yeah. But that wasn't, wow, boy, did they fight to tell her to stay here. But that again, that's that intelligence that we all keep preaching about, the intelligence of the spirit, you know? And uh, I always say to spirit, unless it's life or death, you know, if I'm not working, you know, hold fire. And, no, um, they, so, yeah. you know? Thank so, you. Yeah, I just, just say thank you from spirit for, for being willing yeah, to do that. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Terrific. Just shows the power, doesn't it? 
It does. It does. And then, and, and then talking about the grief, you know, it's, it's physical. It, it's just so grief is so powerful. Um, you, it just makes you sick physically. You can't concentrate and all of this stuff. So it takes a while to let in, um, let in hope, let in spirit. Um, I, I've talked to families where I've read for them. And, and this is another thing I wanted to have you talk about is sometimes um, some members of the family can feel spirit. They'll have dreams or, or they'll, they'll smell or they'll have some kind of connection. Yeah. Um, and then another member of the family has nothing. There's nothing. And they're sobbing or they're upset. Or they, why do they like them better than me? And I, I have a lot of thoughts on why that is, but I'm sure you've heard of this before. What What are your thoughts? I've, you know, that that's something that can happen, you know, a lot, especially with maybe siblings. Uh, why does my brother feel and have visits from my dad and and I don't and that's that's hard to 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 you know process as an individual but also as a medium how do you navigate through that and I always try to feel into why is that individual got that connection more what is going on in that person's life more and what I've started to understand is that individual needs that connection with that loved one more at this moment because they're battling addiction or because they've split up with a partner or because. So I try to get them a rational understanding rather than trying to say, well, you know, it is what it is, you know. Um, and, you know, I always try to say to clients, don't overthink things don't overthink things look for the bigger picture and sometimes Nancy the, the the person asking the question is maybe missing their signs as well so being a medium going back and saying well you know your your daughter's getting upset you know what what would you like me to tell her and you know maybe they will then be able to give more of that clarification as well but it's it's, it's a it's a difficult conversation to have with people isn't it it, 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 but it's real. It's so real. I, I can't tell you how many conversations that that I've had. And um, and I I even with mediums talking about why is this medium getting more than I'm getting? And it's it's a develop. It's a it's a, so many things play into it and how you're paying attention to the signs or what you're willing to experience um, outside of yourself, all kinds of things. Um, but but also. Um, you know, why do you get along? Why does one sibling get along better with mom than the other one? You know, kind of like that. But yeah, I think, I think you know, the easiest way to, to, to sum it up is we're being so focused just in that moment. Right. What were you like maybe five years ago? Or what? how do you know that that relationship's not going to change two years down the line when your brother is more settled and, and left home and doesn't be taken by the hand? So I think trying to, to describe a bigger picture rather than just in that moment is very important to look at. There's always a bigger picture, always. Every beautiful canvas, whether it's a Leonardo or a Da Vinci, you know, they, they all start off with a canvas but we don't all know what is going to bleed onto that canvas until the artist starts to put their gift to use. Absolutely, absolutely. I sometimes um, think of it as um, you, you're developing a new relationship. Dad's gone, mom's gone. And so that relationship that you had is is ended, which is so sad. But there's a new relationship that's ready to blossom and it, and they take time to develop. And uh, no, no relationship happens overnight, does it? You no. know, it's it's the same as sadly dating, you know. Um, you don't just fall madly in love on that first date as much as we would like to think we do. You know, we have to maybe go for a second date and then a third date. And you know, it's about relationship building rapport and you know, starting to realize what makes them tick and what they don't like and you know what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with. And exactly like you said, it's it's about you know adapting and uh, sacrificing and making adjustments in your own life and your your own understanding um and being willing that's the most important thing is being willing um to move forward into that new form of relationship or that new form of life absolutely absolutely i'm i'm sometimes reluctant though aren't we <laughs> we what <laughs> sometimes we are reluctant Absolutely. And even as a medium, sometimes there's just, yeah, I don't think so, guys. But yep. yeah, um, I'm just going over. We have a lot of people making some really nice comments. Um, 
since we started talking. And one of the comments was um, the, you know, there's been a lot of channeling happening, developing people are really interested in channeling. And um, it's a little bit different than mediumship. And I just wondered if you had any thoughts, mediumship channeling um, or um, yeah. Trail. Well, I, I've, I've not really experienced channeling. Um, I, I, I wouldn't really know what one person's perception is of channeling versus what my perception of channeling is. My understanding of, of what people perceive channeling to be is voicing um, spirit communication. Um, and for me, that would actually come down to maybe the the trance uh, and the the altered states so again it's terminology it's understanding and again it comes down to education actually doesn't it um so what my thoughts are on it i really i really don't really know where to go with 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 that so maybe if the person's still watching they could maybe give us some more detail into that for me to you know be able to give more of an accurate um understanding so if i don't know i can't give you it as yet Okay, thanks. So you, you mentioned a little bit about trance. There's trance mediumship, trance healing, and then trans communication from spirit guides. And have you um, have any thoughts on that? Have you worked in in that? Um... I personally um, have not developed that side of, of my mediumship pure and simply because I've not got the time. And if I've not got the time to sit religiously to develop that with the spirit then if I can't dedicate that to them then I'm not going to to bother do you know because I'm always on tour I'm living out of a suitcase I'm in and out of hotels I've not got that structure so I just kind of stick to my mental mediumship um I've been blessed uh to experience true trans mediumship um and physical mediumship um through my my colleague my friend as I said Scott Milligan um so I I have experienced and I have actually had my own father materialize in the seance room and communicate um with his his voice um so I have experienced um and uh, I am knowledgeable in trance and the altered states and the physical because of my my um experiences and because of my my colleagues and Scott Milligan is here saying hi. Oh, oh hi. there so, she is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so let's see. What else would you like to add? Um, you're, you're here. We're, we're we're winding down. And is there anything that you haven't been able to say that's real important? Or not too sure. Not too sure. I just came with uh, little old me, my my little water, and I was just looking forward to having a conversation with you and uh, seeing where it goes. Like I said to you before we push the live button, I am an open book. I am an open book. But like I said, I, I've got lots of things coming up. Um, if you are in the, the States or if you are in Canada, um, I am coming out to, to Canada and uh, Colorado and um, I'll be back here in, in Massachusetts with lots more. So you can head over to my website, uh, dominicbogue.com, and it will take you to my uh, US website. Um, but yeah, I've got lots of things coming up and for the future as well. Um, Scott's watching, as you said. So myself and Scott are going to be doing um, an event here in Boston next year um, and also heading to, to New Orleans. So we have well, there's lots of things coming up. All I can say is, you know, follow, follow us all um, and yourself, Nancy. Follow Nancy, follow myself on social media. Uh, I'm not a big Instagram person. Uh, I don't really know how that all works. Uh, but Facebook, you'll get me on there. Yeah. But uh, well, well, thanks. So Dominic Bogue, um, his link is on is on the Facebook page. And for those who are listening to this as a podcast, it's D-O-M-I-N-I-C-B-O-A-G. You could uh, just Google it. There's That's only it. one me. <laughs> and um, I I feel that, uh, are you on YouTube channels? Can, can you, you can, do you yeah, have? You'll get, you'll get interviews and podcasts and there's a few little videos I've, I've done. The problem is, Nancy, this is, this is the problem. Because I'm always on the go, I'm here and there, and you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm constantly doing something. I don't have the time, you know, I don't have the, the time, and you know, that's what one of my students says. Sometimes the mediums that are unknown is because they're actually out there doing the work, and I'm like, oh, I didn't think well, of that. You're known <laughs> but uh, uh, you've said some very important things um, during this time that are, are very basic. We were talking to people who who don't know mediumship very well. So that was very important, I feel like. And you gave some beautiful examples. 
really appreciate your t- that you took the time to to talk about these these things to explain to people why they're feeling or seeing or not no understanding um, and how they can use medium about mediumship and how they can use mediumship to yeah. really help. So oh, thank pleasure. Appreciate that. Um, again, um, you, you can find this YouTube. Uh, on, uh, you can hear this interview again on Angelscape's podcast on YouTube. You can also go to any podcast outlet and find Angelscapes and you can find this interview again. And um, it sounds like Dominic's going to be around for a long time. So if, he's, if you don't see him this year, you can see him next year or the year after. So uh, we're really excited to have you in our world. And um, I want to encourage everybody. I bring people onto this podcast who can help you, who can inform you and help you grow from where you are in your life now. So please take advantage of um, everyone that I bring here. And please look up Dominic. And um, he's a, a wonderful a, um, tool, I guess. I don't mean to call you a tool. But... <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment, Nancy. <laughs> um, for and I and I encourage everyone. It's it's to grow and and come out of come out of where you are to a new place with all of these people that come on. Dominic's one of them. So thank you again. Um, and we'll we'll be seeing you soon. I hope. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the end of this episode. We're going to end it and. Um, And we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for joining the Angelscapes podcast. We hope you've gained new insights and inspiration for your journey to uncover and access your soul's power. For more information and a deeper dive into finding clarity in your life, go to angelscapes.com. Remember to subscribe so you can be part of the discussion. It may just change your life. See you next time.